Welcome to lesson 141. This is the first lesson in chapter 4, rational numbers in the coordinate plane. So we've learned about rational numbers and what they are, and now we're going to be talking about them in regards to where they go in the coordinate plane. Our objectives today, I will be able to name points on the coordinate plane and graph points on the coordinate plane. Now remember, if you have not watched the lesson on brain pop yet, that I posted for you earlier, you need to make sure to stop this video, go to the BrainPop website, put in the username and password, and look at the coordinate plane video. If you cannot remember the username and password, it is posted for you on Edmodo. Alright, so based on what we saw, I want us to take a short little quiz on the vocabulary. I want you to make sure that you know what each of these terms means and make sure that you also have it in your vocabulary packet. So make sure that you're open to your vocabulary. And we're going to read the definition and then we're trying to going to try and guess which word fits the definition. So the first one, the point zero, 00 on the coordinate plane, it is where the x-axis and y-axis intersect. So which of these five words fits that definition? If you said the origin, you are correct. Okay, the origin is where the plane begins, and it, everything has to start somewhere. So it starts at 0, 0 on both number lines. And so when you're talking about graphing ordered pairs, you always have to start at the origin. Think of the origin as the starting line. Right, the horizontal axis on a coordinate plane. Now horizontal goes left to right. I remember horizontal by thinking of the horizon. When you're looking out at the horizon and watching the sunset, you're looking at something that's going left to right. The horizon goes left to right, so horizontal means left to right. So the horizontal axis on a coordinate plane is the x-axis. The vertical axis on the coordinate plane would have to be opposite then, so the vertical axis on the coordinate plane goes up and down. And I remember this by thinking of your vertical leap. It tells you how high up in the air you can jump. So vertical is up and down. The vertical axis on a coordinate plane is the y-axis. A plane formed by a horizontal number line and a vertical number line. Well, looking up here, the only thing that is a plane is the coordinate plane. So the coordinate plane, by definition, is a plane formed by a horizontal number line and a vertical number line. Last but not least, coordinates x and y from the coordinate plane that give an exact point on the grid. The last set that we have is ordered pairs. So an ordered pair is the coordinates that tell you an exact point or placement of something on a coordinate plane. Alright, so before we go on I want to make sure that you understand what an ordered pair looks like. So an ordered pair again is coordinates x and y and you'll notice they're in parentheses. They always have to be in parentheses. Right, so when we talked about factors, factors had to be in parentheses so that way we could see that they were factors. That's what the parentheses tell us. When we see something that's in parentheses and it's only two numbers, like this 3 and negative 4, that clues us into them being an ordered pair, not necessarily factors. Right, so the first coordinate is always the x-coordinate, the first number of an ordered pair. It tells how many units we move left or right. The second coordinate is the y-coordinate, the second number of an ordered pair. It tells us how many units up or down we go. Order does matter because when it comes to an ordered pair and graphing an ordered pair, you have to move across and then up or down. So you need to have your across or left to right number and then your up and down number. All right, so for ordered pair, your example, you can have this written down, the parentheses 3, negative 4. And then going back, the origin, I'm okay with you putting 
zero, zero as your ordered pair. The x-axis, I just want you to put a number line like this. Oops, sorry, looks like that. And then your y-axis goes up and down, so we want it to be zero. One would go up and negative one would go down. So you have to think, so when you go left, it's negative, and then when you're looking at a number line that's vertical, it's kind of like it's tilted. So if I were to take this x axis and turn it, notice the number negative one is on bottom and the positive one is on top. Okay, and then for a coordinate plane, I'm not worried about an example there. You just have to know that a coordinate plane is your grid. So if you want to make your own grid, that would be a good example. And then again, ordered pair. Let me set is this. All right, so how can we remember to go across before going up? So I have two examples for you here. Your first tip is think of an airplane. An airplane has to travel across the runway before going up into the air. Or, for those of us that are sports-minded, a basketball player travels across the court before going up to shoot. Right, so you have to get to your placement before you can jump up or squat down to touch it. Alright, so we're going to try this first one together. We're going to drag each point below to its appropriate place on the coordinate grid. So before I said, we always have to start at the origin. Now the origin isn't always going to be listed because it's hard to put two zeros in the same spot. So you have to know that if this is one, then one backwards would have to be zero. And if this is one, then one down would have to be zero. So for the orange dot, we want to go negative three, two. So since it's negative, that means I have to go left three spaces. So one, actually I'm going to grab my dot and drag it along. One, two, three. And then now I have a positive two. So positive two means I go up two spaces. And that is where the orange dot will lie. Right, same thing with the blue dot. They want us to go to the point four, five. So we go to four. So one, two, three, four. And then five. Since it's positive, I go up. One, two, three, four, five. Now I know each of these is worth one because it shows me on here that each line is worth one. If these were different, say this were two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve, we would have to place them a little bit differently. All right, so we start at the origin and we have two, negative six. So again, since it's positive, the first number I'm going to go right because we go across first. So you have to think it has to go left or right first before it can go up and down. So we're going one, two spaces to the right. And then since it's a negative six, we have to go down six spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, now in this case we have two negatives, so I'm going to start again at the origin. And I'm going negative one, two, three, four. And then since it's a negative four again, I have to go down four. One, two, three, four. All right, I would like you to try these problems on your own. And when you come back, we'll check your answers. All right, so the orange dot should be at zero, negative five, so that means we don't go anywhere left or right. And then we go down five. The blue dot should be three spaces to the left, and it shouldn't have gone up or down any because the y coordinate was a zero. So anytime you have a zero for your x, it should stay on the y-axis, and anytime you have a zero for your y, it should stay on the x-axis. I know that seems a little bit backwards, so I want you to get used to that because it will show up in later chapters. All right, then the yellow dot should be four backwards and five up. One, two, three, four, five. And then the green dot should be five to the right and four down. All 
All right, so now we're going to do this backwards. I have the dots listed here, and we are going to find the ordered pairs. So now we're just finding where the dot is, and we're matching it up with its numbers on the number line. However, sometimes there aren't numbers on the number line, which you'll notice is the case in your notes. I didn't give you numbers because I want you to get used to counting on the coordinate grid. So this is the one we're doing first. And you'll notice because yours aren't printed in color, I wrote the colors underneath the dots for you. All right, so first we have the green dot. I know that I have to start at the x -ax at the origin, at the x and y axis, and I need to move 1, 2, because that's on the same line. So I needed to move 2 to the right, so I can put 2 as my x coordinate. And then I had to move down 2. So since I moved down 2, down means negative, and since I moved two spaces, it would be a negative 2. Then I can check my number line and check and see that, yes, this is a negative 2, yes, this is a positive 2. All right, now you have the orange dot. Uh, the orange dot, we're starting at 0, 0, and we're moving left 1. So since it's left, that tells us it's a negative 1, and then we're moving up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that is a positive 5. The blue dot, again, we're moving left. 1, 2, 3, 4. So since it's left, it's negative, and we move 4 spaces. And then we're moving down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So since it's down, it's negative, and I moved 6 spaces. For the yellow dot, I move 2 to the right. Since it's right, it's positive. So you can even make yourself a little note here while you're practicing. Right and up are always going to be positive. Down and left will always be negative. So I moved 2 to the right, and then I moved up 1. Since I moved up, I know it's positive, and I only moved one space. Last but not least, I have the pink dot. So I have to move two spaces to the left, so that's a negative 2. And I move up 1, so that is a positive 1. All right, on this next page, I would like you to try these next few on your own. Okay, again, I listed the colors underneath for you, so you will be able to see where they are. And if you are having trouble because I was not able to list that on here, I want you to pause the video while I am on this screen so you can see the different colors. When you come back, we'll go over your answers. All right, so your answer should have been, for the green dot, you should have had 4, negative 4. For the orange dot, it should have been negative 5, 2. For the blue dot, you should have had 5, negative 2. So see how the negatives do make a difference? Because absolute value-wise, these are the same numbers, but since this is a negative 5, we went this way, and this is a positive 5, so we went this way and one went up and one went down because this was positive and this was negative. For the yellow dot, you should have negative three, four. And you have to be careful because if you have four negative three, you would have ended up over here. And then for the yellow, I'm sorry, the pink dot, you have negative two, negative two. All right, so lastly on here, I have for you a map that has different places on it. And I just want you to give me the coordinates of each location. Do not worry about this compass right here. I just want you to give me each of the places coordinates. And when you come to class, we'll go over your answers. As always, if you have any questions, please post them to Edmodo so we can go over them in class.